Hi everyone, the channel Easy Lecture welcomes you. In this video, I am going to post a list of formulas from number 51 to 100. Already in part 1, I have posted videos on formulas from 1 to 50 on the subject electronics and communication engineering, which will be highly helpful for the preparation of a competitive examination. In this part, we shall discuss the next 50 formulas. Before entering into the video, subscribe my channel Easy Lecture. Now, let us enter into the video. So, number 51. Transition capacitance CT of diode equal to 5 picofarad. Number 52. Transition capacitance CT of BJT bipolar junction transistor that is equal to 3 picofarad. So if these values are not given in the question, it should be considered uh, by default as 5 picofarad for diode and 3 picofarad for BJT. Next, number 53. Diffusion capacitance under forward biasing condition. Comma CT is equal to epsilon A divided by W. Okay, so this is for diode. Okay, forward bias when diode is connected in the in forward biasing condition. This is the diffusion capacitance. So here the formula is same for transition capacitance and also diffusion capacitance. So transition capacitance occurs under reverse biasing condition, whereas diffusion capacitance occurs under forward biasing condition. And uh, even though the both the formulas are same, there is a relationship between them. Number fifty-four, diffusion capacitance should be greater than transition capacitance. Although the formulas are same, the reverse biasing uh, capacitance should be less than the forward biasing capacitance okay now next one half wave rectifier so rectifier it is used to convert um ac into dc alternate current into direct current now the instantaneous current it equal to im into sin omega t so here the output of a half wave rectifier um it is a pulsating dc it is not a pure dc again we have to regulate it we have to connect the, we have to give the rectified output to voltage regulator to make a pure dc so before that it is a pulsating dc pulsating dc means for the first half of cycle there will be a sine waveform for the next half of the cycle there won't be any waveform so similarly it goes on uh, for, uh, as the time varies so here since it is a sine waveform we are considering sine omega t and omega is the angle of frequency t is the time period that is taken along x axis i is the maximum amplitude Okay, so with this relationship, we can find time at any instant. Okay, number 56, I is equal to VI divided by RF plus RL. So here it is a simple Ohm's law, but the thing is here both diode resistance and also load resistance, both the things are considered. Okay, so this is for half wave rectifier, the current is equal to voltage divided by RF plus RL. So for all parametric values of different rectifiers, refer notebook. So this is for my reference. I have written these values in another notebook. Now, formula number 57, DC output current, comma IDC is equal to area divided by period. So this is a concept. Okay. So the formula is 1 by 2 pi integration of 0 to 2 pi I of T DT. Here area, this is area. This portion is area. Integration of 0 to 2 pi I of T DT. The thing is, let us consider a rectangle. For a rectangle, the area is length multiplied with breadth. So here, the length is So along y axis, uh, the length is i of t, and along x axis, we have uh, time period you know, t. Okay, so length into breadth, and it is taken for one complete period. So integration of 0 to 2 pi. So 0 to 2 pi dt becomes t. Okay, so length into breadth that becomes area, and for one complete period that comes in the denominator that is 1 by 2 pi. So this is the concept how it is related with formula. Now, number 58, i rms root mean square value of current is equal to root of 1 by 2 pi integration of 0 to 2 pi i square of t dt so here root mean square means we have to initially square this root mean square of current so first square this current i square of t dt then 0 to 2 pi 1 by 2 pi so this is mean value we are dividing it by 2 pi this is mean value okay then root taking the square okay then number 59 rms ac output current comma i rms dash is equal to root of IRMS square minus IDC square, RMS of AC output current. So this is um, for DC. Next, number 60, ripple factor comma R is equal to RMS of AC component divided by DC component. Okay, so this is not RMS of AC component divided by RMS of DC component. RMS of AC component divided by DC component. So IRMS dash divided by IDC, not IRMS dash divided by IRMS. So this is IRMS dash divided by IDC. That is equal to root of IRMS square minus IDC square divided by IDC. Okay. Number 61, form factor comma KF is equal to I RMS divided by I average or IDC. So here DC output current is otherwise called as average current. Okay. So that is why we have taken mean. When we take mean, this form, this 1 by 2 pi comes here also. Root means square and for that mean, we are dividing it again by 2 pi. 
So mean current, average current, DC uh, current, everything, all these uh, terms are same. IRM is uh, next number 62. Relation between form factor and ripple factor, comma R of is equal to root of KF square minus 1. So oh, square of form factor minus 1 and the whole. Number 63, input power, comma PA equal to IRM square divided by RF plus RL. So here we have taken from Ohm's law. Ohm's law is equal to uh, I is equal to V by R, R V is equal to IR and power is equal to voltage into current and uh, replacing voltage by current we have got IR minus square divided by RF plus RL. The only thing is we have to consider both diode resistance and also the load resistance. Now, number 64, rectifier efficiency equal to DC output power divided by AC input power into 100 percentage. Number 65, transformer utilization factor. TUF is equal to DC power supply to load divided by AC rating of secondary winding. Number 66, peak factor equal to VM divided by VRMS that is equal to IM divided by IRMS. Number 67, voltage regulation is equal to V no load minus V full load divided by V full load into 100%. So there are chances for asking a lot of questions based on this formula. So very important formula. Voltage regulation comma v, uh, voltage regulation equal to V no load minus V full load divided by V full load into 100%. Number 68, voltage regulation equal to R divided by RL into 100. So both the concepts are same and uh, different formula. When voltage is given, we can use this formula. When resistors are given, we can use this formula. R divided by RL into 100. Now for BJT, number 69, common base current gain comma alpha is equal to beta divided by beta plus 1 that is equal to IC divided by IE, collector current divided by emitter current. Number 70, common emitter current gain comma beta equal to alpha divided by 1 minus alpha that is equal to IC divided by IB, collector current divided by base current. Number 71, Common collector current gain comma gamma is equal to 1 plus beta that is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus alpha that is equal to IE divided by IB. Emitter current divided by base current. So here in these three formulas we have discussed common base, common emitter and common collector configuration. These are related to these configurations. Number 72, emitter efficiency comma gamma. So this gamma is different from this gamma. That is equal to IPE divided by IE. This is for PNP transistor. That is equal to INE divided by IE. This is for NPN transistor. Since emitter efficiency, we are finding the emitter efficiency, the emitter current comes in the denominator. Okay. Number 73, transport factor comma beta star or alpha t is equal to IPC divided by IP. The collector current due to holes, emitter current due to holes. So this is for PNP transistor. Okay. Number 74, large signal comma alpha. So this alpha is different from common base current gain alpha. Okay. So large signal comma alpha is equal to del IC divided by del IE. Okay, so here alpha is equal to IC divided by IE. Large signal comma alpha equal to del IC divided by del IE. Number 75. Relation between emitter efficiency, transport factor, large signal. That is alpha equal to beta star into gamma. So large signal is the product of transport factor and emitter efficiency. So that is the thing here. Now, drive equation for collector current. Number 76. IC is equal to alpha into IE plus ICO. So, open circuited collector current. Number 77. IC is equal to alpha divided by 1 minus alpha into IB plus 1 divided by 1 minus alpha into ICO. Number 78. IC is equal to beta into IB plus 1 plus beta into ICO. So, here in these three formulas, 76, 77, 78, we have discussed the collector current drive equation for collector current in different forms when emitter current is given we can use this formula when base current is given we can use this formula and here this is also another form of this so alpha divided by 1 minus alpha is beta so this is a derivation of our previous formulas that we have discussed in configuration uh, configuration part here this formula will be a highly useful when dealing with a lot of problems okay number 79 Collector to emitter current with base open ICEO. So collector to emitter current with base open ICEO equal to 1 plus beta into ICEO. Collector open. So that is ICEO. Number 80. Collector to base current with the emitter open ICBO equal to ICEO. Okay. Now stability. So stability for this circuit. Circuit 1. For this circuit, uh, there are three resistors connected uh, uh, across um, collector, base and emitter respectively. And here to the base there is a supply and uh, mm, there is a source and again uh, there is a resistor between VCC and uh, collector and uh, 
a resistor connected from emitter is connected to the ground. So for this kind of circuit, stability S is equal to 1 plus beta divided by 1 minus beta into dou IB divided by dou IC. And beta we know already, it is related with common emitter current gate. It is common emitter current gate, beta. 1 plus beta divided by 1 minus beta into dou IB divided by dou IC. Number 82, dou IB divided by dou IC is equal to minus RE divided by RB plus RE. So this derivation is also related to this circuit minus RE divided by RB plus RE and substituting this instead of dou IB divided by dou IC we will be getting uh, formula number 83 stability S is equal to 1 plus beta divided by 1 plus beta into RE divided by RB plus RE okay. now this is second form of circuit in which there is a resistor connected from VCC to the base okay and uh, there is no resistor in emitter hand and there is a resistor there are two resistors uh, from VCC one to the base and another to the collector for this kind of circuit stability S is equal to 1 plus beta okay then formula number 85 for circuit 3 so this is another form of circuit so this is similar to circuit 2 except there is a resistor from uh, emitter and it is connected to the ground for this kind of circuit the stability S is equal to 1 plus beta divided by 1 plus beta into RE divided by RB plus RE so here this stability and this stability they are same so here also we have got 1 plus beta divided by 1 plus beta into RE divided by RB plus RE here also we are getting 1 plus beta divided by 1 plus beta into RE divided by RB plus RE so there is a relationship between these two circuits these two circuits circuit 3 and circuit 1 they are similar circuits now circuit 4 86 circuit 4 here there is a resistor connected from VCC to one node and from that node uh, the collector hand of BJD is connected and to that node there is a resistor connected to the base also so for this kind of circuit the stability S is equal to and there is no resistor in emitter hand for this circuit stability S is equal to 1 plus beta divided by 1 plus beta into RC divided by RC plus RB now circuit 5 this is also similar to circuit 4 except there is a resistance connected from emitter hand to the ground so for this kind of circuit stability is S is equal to 1 plus beta divided by 1 plus beta into RC plus RE divided by RC plus RB plus RE since emitter resistor is present that presence can be felt in the formula when we compare these two formulas now BJT biasing number uh, 88 fixed bias or base resistor bias so this is similar to this is nothing but circuit 2 so circuit 2 Technically, we call it as fixed bias circuit or base resistor bias. For this, stability is 1 plus beta. Then, collector to base bias. Collector to base bias is similar to circuit 4. And here, the same stability S is equal to 1 plus beta divided by 1 plus beta into RC divided by RB plus RE. Then, number 90. So, this is otherwise called as self bias or voltage divider bias or emitter bias circuit. So, this is nothing but circuit number. Circuit number. 3 or circuit number 1 okay so circuit number 1 and circuit number 3 and this circuit that is discussed under formula number 90 all these circuits are similar they are called a similar circuit okay and for this kind of circuit the same stability S is equal to 1 plus beta divided by 1 plus beta into RE divided by RB plus RE. So we can compare this stability with this stability. So same, same stabilities. Alright. Number 91, voltage divider rule. Okay. So here to find the voltage at this point, we have to use the formula Vx is equal to V1 into R2. So opposite resistance plus V2 into R1, opposite resistor of this voltage, V2 into R1 divided by some of these two resistors, R1 plus R2. Okay. Next, thermal run away. Tj number 92. Tj minus Ta equal to theta into Pd. Where Tj is junction temperature, Ta is ambient temperature, theta is thermal resistance, Pd is dissipated power. Right? So these are the uh, components of this formula, elements of this formula. Conditions to prevent thermal runaway. So, no, so these are the conditions to prevent thermal runaway. So to prevent thermal runaway, dou PD divided by dou TJ equal, should be equal to 1 by theta. Okay. That means differentiation of PD with respect to TJ should be equal to the reciprocal of thermal resistance. 
then number 94 do pc divided by do tg should be less than do pd divided by do tj so this is another condition to prevent thermal runaway then number 95 do pc divided by do tj should be less than 1 by theta so here since do pd divided by do tj is equal to 1 by theta so we are replacing this part by this part then number 96 vce should be less than vcc by 2 that means collector emitter voltage should be less than half of the supply voltage vcc okay so these are the conditions to prevent thermal runaway then j fit important formula number 97 ids drain source resistance the resistance uh, sorry drain source current equal to idss into 1 minus vgs divided by vp the whole square so this is called as shock equation so idss is a saturated current saturation current the number 98 vgs gain source voltage sorry gate source voltage vgs is equal to vp into 1 minus root of ids divided by ids so here from this formula vgs can be derived okay then formula number 99 mu equal to rd into gm where mu is the amplification factor rd is the drain resistance gm is the transconductance then formula number 100 gm is equal to 2 into IDSS divided by VP into 1 minus VGS divided by VP. Okay, so here these are the important formula of uh, JFET. Again, we have more formulas on JFET than MOSFET. Then there are a lot of formulas that we have to discuss. Um, around 455 formulas are there. So in this video, I am closing it with this uh, 100th formula. So here, I hope this video will be highly useful for you to prepare for uh, competitive exams and uh, in Tamil Nadu TRP Polytechnic exam is all going to happen very soon. So in this highly risky Corona period, stay safe and uh, make this period very useful to prepare for this kinds of exam. Stay safe, stay at home. So meet you again in another video in which we will be discussing the next 50 families, family number 101 to 150. Until then. Bye. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe my channel Easy Lecture. Meet you again in another video. Thank you. Bye.